Bless your name, O Lord. Amen. Thank you, Unity Band. I appreciate you all in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and open up the book of the scriptures. I want to bring you warm greetings from the Outreach Church of Jesus. Amen. We salute you and you and you to the elders of the church, thanking God for Elder Irving, Elder Levy, Elder Blair up in New York, thanking God for all the ministry, the minister Steve and Kevin, glory to God, thanking the Lord for the youth ministers, amen, thanking God for Minister Jay, for the mothers, for the brothers, for the saints of the Most High God. I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet, amen, as many of you as are able Amen and amen. I intend not to be before you long today and I will follow up and come again. Amen and minister to you deeper. Amen in the words of God. We've been dwelling much in the prophetic and how things will unfold in the end of the world so that our faith is in the scripture. Knowing that whatsoever things were written before time, they were written for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort, that's important, amen, the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. When I understand the revelation of the scriptures, it comforts me concerning my walk and concerning the coming of the blessed God and Savior and Jesus Christ. Amen. But, amen, in order to get to that day, amen, there is spiritual warfare that we must engage in and that we must endure. We have to fight a good fight. Of faith, we have to arm ourselves, amen, with the mind of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And between now and then, I always have to take time and remind you of what you have and what is inside of you. Will you give me Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1? And I want us to read uh, together. We've had. Uh, such a powerful sequence of youth altars over the last month, month and a half, where God has been unveiling himself, amen, in the midst of the altar in such a mighty way. And uh, through prayer, which the song was just speaking of, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer we need to be reminded ever so often what we have, what we possess. We don't have to chase it. Nobody got to get us on a spaceship to take us to the outer space to get it. By reason of the fact that you are anointed by the gift of the Holy Ghost. There are some things that you have. Can you just say there are some things that I have. Go to God. Amen. I ain't got to chase it. I ain't got to worry about it. I have it already. The Holy Ghost said to Moses when he was standing before the sea, what's in your hand? Yes, sir. Ask somebody, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? Come on. God revealed to Moses, you got to run. Why are you worrying about a miracle? The power is already in your hand. Lift it up. Glory to God. And I just want to help you today. Lift up what you already have. If you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, I want you to open up your mouth this this morning. We just want to have a little revival. It's, it's I want to revive the truth in your spirit Lord Jesus is coming back but you gotta war you gotta stand you gotta fight brother Isaac you gotta strive yes, because the master hasn't yet risen up mm. yes, sir. so read this with me 
And when he had called unto him his twelve, they were his. They were, they were his. Open up your mouth. Say, Lord, Lord I am his. I'm yours. Glory to God. Amen. You need to recognize who you belong to. Glory to God. He purchased me with his blood. I didn't go down in water for no reason. I needed to buy me with a price. You are his. Come on. Lay hands on somebody. Tell them you are his. You are his. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are his. You are his. You are his. You are his. Ain't nobody get you, Jim. You are his. There's power when we touch and agree. You are his. I know the adversary whispering to you that God have abandoned you. God have forsaken you. But the scripture said you are his. My sheep got to know my voice. And when they hear a stranger, they got to say to him, get behind me. I am his. So read together. And when he had called unto him, his 12 disciples, he gave them power. Come on. Are you a disciple? Come on. Are you a disciple? Are you his? Then there's something that you already received when he called you. Come on. Come on. Come on. He gave them power against. Against. Against depression. I am against you. With what? Power. Authority that has been given to me. Worry and anxiety. I am against you. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For evildoers shall be cut down like the grass. And wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord. And do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. Verily, thou shalt be fed. You know why you're going to feed you? Because you are his. He gave them power against what? Unclean spirits. Two. Any unclean spirits in your territory right now? This is so good that you ain't got to call for the elder. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If it's in your house, Ricky, you cast it out. Glory to God. Amen. If it's troubling you, you cast it out. Erica, you cast it out because you are it. That's the book. Mm. Come on. Do you believe this? Come on. Yes, sir. He gave them power against unclean spirits to what? To cast them out and to heal most. Some, a few. Mm, come on, break it down, yes, sir. What matter? What matter? My God, there was some given to you. And when I made you mine, I didn't just make you mine. I put something in your power. I poured something into you. I gave you power against anything unclean in the heaven or in the earth it must be subject to the power because the power is not mine the power is his and he said my power I give it to you and uh, he said I'm going to give them power to heal all manner of sickness and uh, What do you have? What do you have? 
the communication of your faith becomes effectual by acknowledging every good thing that is in you through Jesus Christ. What do you have? Glory to God, hallelujah. Against what? Against unclean spirits. You also have power to heal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so our adversary will move in a manner that will allow me to forget I have a rod in my hand. Amen. Come on and give God a shout. And you can be seated. You have power against unclean spirits. You have power against unclean spirits. Unclean spirits cannot bind you. You bind them. Through the name of Jesus Christ, there should be nothing unclean lingering in the midst of you. Nothing unclean amongst your children. You must be, you, 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 you must be in a place where you understand that God has rested on you with glory and with power and with understanding and might so that when in warfare you remember who you are and what you possess. Amen. Oftentimes we worry mm -hmm. because the seed ain't open yet. Mm. Come on. Come on now. Listen, when Moses lifted up the rod, the seed in straightway opened. Come on. The Bible said a wind blew all through that night. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Yet because the thing didn't happen yet, that don't mean the spirit of God ain't already working. Come on. Come on. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yeah. I lifted up the rod, I looked back, the sea still there, but I feel the wind blowing. Glory to God, the wind blow where it want to. You don't know where it's coming. You don't know where it's going, but you can hear the sound thereof. God, I already lifted up my voice, and I'm walking away from this situation. God, you gonna take care of it. No, God, because you gave me power. Come on. Mm. For God have not given us. God has not given us. Where you reading from? Second Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1. And, seven. and verse 7, listen to this. For God, God have not given has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of torment because fear brings bondage and torment. Mm -hmm. I'm worried because I asked God and the thing didn't happen yet. But you got power and if you ask him, glory to God, just stand right there and do what the Holy Ghost told the Moses. Stand still and see. I didn't see it. Well, stop moving. You going uh, you going over here, mother? I ain't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, Brother Harris, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Jen, I don't know what I'm gonna do. No, get back to where you lifted up the rod and be still. I already gave you power. You have authority. Glory to God, hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell you have authority. Glory to God, amen. All this power we got, glory to God, you need to come back and rely on what God gave you. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? My God, what spirit did you receive? My God, hallelujah. If you're fearful right now, I want you to cast out fear in the name of Jesus. Speak to me. Fear, go away. You got a son? And when you speak to him, 
You're waiting for his permission when you give him a commandment, aren't you? If you tell him, go to your room. What does he do? And, and if he act like he's taking too long, what happens to you? Because he realizes he has authority. Power is translated as authority. You tell fear, get out of here. I command you right now. Glory to God. If you don't move right now, I'm going to banish you from the state of Florida. Don't you know the devil saw Jesus and they suffer him? Don't carry us. Don't cast us out of the region. If you don't move right now, I'm going to banish you from Kissimmee. While you're asking permission, when he already gave you power. Somebody say, I'm going to walk in it today. Everything on clean go. Get behind me. Come on. And you stay right there. I'm a soldier. Glory to God. I ain't going nowhere. You got to go. You got to flee. I banish you. Don't come back. Sister Kim, Sister Kim, we don't play with devils. If I tell you to come out, you better come out right now. I'm not asking your permission. But he's given us us the spirit of power and of love and of love and of a sound. And you gotta be sober about this thing. Listen, you ain't got to understand the hierarchy of the ranks of the angels and how the angels are ministering to God to carry out his word. You ain't got to understand all of that. All you need to understand is he gave me power and I got it because he gave it to me. I just got it. How you got it? I went down in water one day and I came up and I said hallelujah and the spirit of God filled me and I got it. I ain't got to dig down into the lower hemisphere of the earth to go get it for somebody to bring it up to me. Glory to God. Give me Romans chapter 10. Glory to God. Amen. I, I, I ain't got to rise up all the way into the earth, into the stratosphere to try and get somebody to bring it down to me. The Bible said the word, uh, it is near me. Amen. Romans chapter 10. Amen. Glory to God. And let me start reading right at around verse 9. That is that. Yes. Shalt confess Come on. with thy mouth. With thy mouth. The Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. And shalt believe mm -hmm. in the heart, in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Yes. Thou shalt be saved. So belief have to start from the heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the heart, I got to believe and the heart have to reveal to my mouth what I speak and what I declare. The conviction over the word of God starts in the heart. Give me verse 7. Mm. Or, uh -huh. who shall descend into the deep? Mm -hmm. That is, to bring up Christ again from the so, dead. So if you look at what he's asking, I, I, I love this. Let's go up one more verse. Give me verse 6. But the righteousness, the righteousness, which is of faith, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise. Yes, what does it say? Say not uh -huh. in thine heart. It says, don't say in your heart, who shall ascend into who's heaven. Who's going to go up into the heaven? That is to bring Christ down. To bring above. this down for us. Don't say that in your heart. Or who? Listen, so I ain't got to know what's going on in the heavenlies. Come on. In order to have power. In order to trust in the authority. Mother, I ain't got to say who going to go up there and figure out how all the ranks of the angels going to come down when I call the name Jesus. All I need to do is just call the name Jesus. God will figure all of that out. I just know he gave me power. And when I call his name, this thing got to move. That thing got to go. This disease got to dry up. 
this foot got to come back and join. This air got to be stitched back together. Who shall ascend it to the heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who? Or who? Shall descend into the deep. Shall descend into the deep. That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. So I got to go and dig down so deep. Glory to God. People, I, I, I got to go so deep. When it comes to the power that you receive, you ain't got to go all super deep. Glory to God. In order to try and get it, you ain't got to ascend nowhere. You got it by the nature of the fact that you are his. When he called those disciples... It was fresh off the street. They straightway dropped their nets. And they started following him. They didn't understand everything. But they believed. They believed the authority that was given to them. So they didn't have everything figured out. But they came to them and said, Lord, even the very devils are subject to us through your name. But we don't understand how, but we got it. You don't got to understand it. Just confess. I got it. I got it. I, I, I got it. Amen. Can you declare that today? I, I got it. I, I got it. Glory to God. Amen. It's in the power of your mouth. And I'm going to show it to you here. Glory to God. Amen. You ain't got to go up high. You ain't got to go up deep. But what does the word say in verse 8? But what saith it? What saith it? The word. The word is nigh thee. Is nigh thee even, even in thy mouth. Where is it? You say to that mountain, Come on. be thou removed. Go into the sea. It will obey you. Well, I got to go up a little more. No, you don't. I got to go a little deeper. No, you don't. You already got it. What you need to do is just believe and confess with your mouth. Y'all mighty quiet for some believers. Go. What is the word? It is nigh thee. It is even in your mouth. Why? Death and life are in the power, are in the power of the tongue. And the next part said, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. What does that mean? You ain't speaking enough. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The more you love the power that is in your mouth and in your tongue, you're going to start eating the fruit of it. I said, get out of here. And it left. I said, come to me. And it came. You'll eat the fruit. The more you revere, you, you come to the acknowledgement. It's in your mouth. We talk about so much stuff during the day. How about you take the word of God and eat that thing and get in the whole room and put that in your mouth. Glory to God. I have power against unclean spirit. You say, I ain't got rent. I ain't got lights. I ain't got gas. I'm weak. How about you start saying, I have power against all unclean spirit. I have the power. Hallelujah. They heal. All men of the sea is in your mouth. My God, you got to love it. My God, is there anybody here that'll say, I'm going to love it today? Reason you don't got it? Because you don't love it. But if you love it today, glory to God. A man is snared by the words of his mouth. These shoes is killing me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We speak so much things. But how about we remove those things out of our mouth and replace it with what God said. It will be in the heart. And I'm going to tell you, the more you speak the word of God, hallelujah, the more that thing ignite and become one with your heart. The issue is the heart. The heart oftentimes is filled with the word and a whole bunch of other stuff that don't pertain to the word. But his delight. My God, what does the first psalm say? Psalms chapter 1 and verse Psalms 2. Psalms 1 and verse 2. But his delight. But his delight. Is in the law. Is in the what? The law. What's the law? The word. The law. 
His delight is in the word of the Lord. And in his law. His law. Do if he meditates. No, he don't meditate. He meditates. But that means the mother. Day and that means the speak. Love. When you rise up, I got power against all unclean spirits. When you lay down, I got power against all unclean spirits. Tossing through the night in between dreams and visions. I got power. My God, hallelujah. This is the word. It got to be in your mouth. Tell somebody, it got to be in your mouth. Get it off the dashboard and put it in your mouth. Glory to God, amen. Get it out the dresser. Amen. Blow the dust off that Bible. And put that thing in your mouth. What does that mean? The meditator. When? Day and night. Day and night. 24 hours a day. Listen. 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 This is very simple. The issue is not that you don't got it. The issue is that you don't meditate Come on. on the fact that you got it. Come on. And so through process of deception and snares from the adversary, you begin to believe you don't got it. Let's return back to confessing the Lord with the mouth and believing it with the heart. His delight. I, I, I'm serious what I'm about to say. And for those of you who are watching this, you got to beware of frogs. Y'all know we don't like frogs at the Kip Hop. They represent unclean spirits. And those spirits are roaming through the earth. And you know frogs are sticky. It's an unclean thing. Slimy and slippery. It don't like to come out in the light. It likes to work in the dark. It meant glory to God and darkness have two meanings. There's a darkness of sin, but there's a darkness when you have lack of understanding. Glory to God. So God want to bring enlightenment to your understanding. Listen, frogs are in the earth. And those frogs are there to deceive you into thinking you do not have the power that you possess. The only way you will overthrow them is God's word. Got to be in your mouth. Day and night. If God word only in your mouth when you come here on Wednesday or on Sunday morning, you will be powerless against the adversary. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law do with he meditate. When? Day and night. And what does the next verse say? And he shall be like, he a, tree. Shall be like a tree planted. Anchored by the rivers of water. Why I need to be anchored? Cause some wind gonna blow. Mm, Glory to God, but I won't move. I'm gonna be in some spiritual warfare where a host is gonna rise up against me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You gotta have the word of God as an anchor in your soul and in your spirit, so that you're not moved by what you see. Even what you feel. And even what you hear. Listen. Make a practice. From this day. Of exalting God's word. Above everything. We receive so many different messages through media. We got different chats and feeds. And, and a lot of the times the stuff that come through it. End up being foolishness. That after we have been occupied in it, at the end, we are left without the revelation of what we possess and what we have. How about the church does begin to put those things down and say, Lord, I'm going to take your word and I'm going to put it in my mouth. 
and I'm going to speak what you said. I'm going to declare what you declared. I'm going to utter what you spoke. And I'm going to tell you, we will see a witness of the power of God in the church when we start to purge out the foolishness. To where we feel like oftentimes we got to go up here or we got to go deeper and make no mistake. We do have to fast. We do have to consecrate. We do have to seek after God. But I'm telling you by the nature of the fact that you are his disciple, you have power outreach. Come on. Yeah. And you got to begin to confess what you have. Because you can walk in a manner as though you're powerless. You can walk in a manner as though you're defeated. You can walk in a manner as though you're subject to the devices of the enemy. Or you can walk in a manner like I got power. Move out the way. I have authority. Don't play. I'll call Jesus. I'm not bound. I, I, I'm not oppressed. You got to start meditating on his law day and night. Who's going to do it? I got a few claps, glory to God, but that's all right. Amen. I got a few claps, and that's how it's going to be, is be those few claps, glory to God, that get the victory over the enemy, glory. Come on. You, you understand? And listen, I'm, I'm not looking for your clap. Come on. I'm looking for your heart to obey the word of God and begin to walk in victory. We can spend time with so other, many other things that don't give us the victory that we have in Jesus. I'm watching Ella Levy today laboring over miracles. Laboring over seeking God for miracles. And I understand exactly where he's coming from. I'm of this mind. Signs will follow those that believe. I want the church to fix their belief. Your belief system is jacked up. Glory to God. Amen. Because it's all type of ideologies and ideas and pollution and corruption that's in your belief. Fix the belief. The sea will pop. The dead will raise. Bones will be mended. Arms will grow. Come on. Come on. Give me Luke chapter 18. Eyes that pop out will go right back in the socket. When you believe him. We want to fix our belief. And it's right in us. Returning to meditating on the word of God. And we got to do it in a certain parameter of prayer. Tell somebody you're only as powerful as you're prayerful. foundation of the church was in prayers they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowships and breaking of bread and people leave out the last part and prayers glory to God next chapter is the hour of prayer your miracle got to be proceeded with prayer we need some folks that will pray them unclean frogs and spirits away and you can't pray your way. Come on. God said you got to pray my way. Come on. 
So 18 and 1 says what? And he spake a parable. He spoke a parable unto them. To this end. To this end. That men ought. That men ought. Always. To sometimes. Always. Every now and then. Always. When I feel like it. When it's convenient. When I have a chance. Oh baby you don't want it bad enough. Glory to God. When you want the power to rest on you. You say my God flesh. Bow your knees. Oh, glory be to God. You'll say, flesh, get up out the bed. Loose the hinges, because you know, glory to God, a lazy man turned on his bed like a door turned on hinges. I break the hinges off the door. You got to consecrate. Yes, sir. Men ought to always pray. pray. And not to think. And not to stop. Mm, not to give up. Glory to God. Come on. It's, it's, he's speaking this so that I always pray. And don't give up. Amen. Don't get frustrated. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to stand in the evil day. And this thing that I decreed, it got to come to pass. Yes, I'm prayerfully in the will of God. Yeah. It must come to pass. Also, let me, let me say this before you read this. The more you meditate on the word of God, the more you'll know where God is. You won't be asking God for stuff that ain't in his will. You won't make God always got to be the one covering your back. You asking for something that's going to destroy you. And he got to say no because you're not in the word enough to know his will. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know he heareth us, then we have the petition that we ask of him. So the word will help me get in the will and the fabric of God and make sure that I have God in my mouth through his word. Amen. Glory to God. So he's speaking to us now that men ought to always pray and not to faint. And not to faint saying, saying there was in a city. There was in a city. A judge. A judge. Which feared not God. Which didn't respect God. Neither regarded man. And didn't respect man. Mm -hmm. And there was a widow. And there city. was a widow in that city. Hold it. Mm -hmm. he's, he's teaching us. Come on. How to pray. Come on. Glory to God. He's got to tell us how we should pray. Because somebody's saying, I'm not going to pray my way. Come on. I'm not going to pray my way. Yes, I pray my way. Ain't nothing happening. I pray my way ain't nothing moving. I pray my way problem still there. I pray my way stuff get worse. If I pray his way, glory to God, I invite God to rise up off the throne and begin to see about my need and my petition. Spoke this to the end that men always pray and not to faint. There's in a certain city a judge, he didn't respect God Neither regarded and he didn't man. respect man. And who was it? And there was a widow. There was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, Say what? Avenge me. Avenge me. Of mine adversary. I got an adversary. Anybody need revenge this morning? Come on. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody need of revenge? They need God to take care of the adversary for. Who's the adversary? The devil. As a roaring lion seeking whom he made the vow. God, I need you to deal with him. Avenge me of my adversary. He's talking about prayer. Come on. Come on. And he would not. And he would not. For a while. I'm going to make you wait. Come on. For you while. ask me for revenge, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to make you wait. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because by waiting, it purifies how bad you really want. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Come on. Waiting will purify how much you really want the thing that you ask God for or will you seek some other remedy will you find some other invention to deal with the problem or will you wait for the judge that you brought the court case to I'm waiting for an answer he's teaching men that they should pray and not give up faith come on son keep reading but afterward, but afterward, he said within himself, he said within himself, though I fear not, God, even though I don't respect God, nor regard, men, and I don't care about men, yet, yet, because this widow, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. 
you got to pray to God. To God said, I got to get up. John, keep troubling me. You got to trouble God until John, God, God said, I got to get up. Zion, keep troubling me. In the morning, Lord, what's going on? In the afternoon, Lord, what's going on? In the evening, Lord, what's going on? In midnight, God, where are you? Next morning, Lord Jesus, you said you gave me power. Lord, next week, oh God, I'm going on a fast. God, this thing got to move. See, because she didn't move. I asked him for something and they didn't come back. I'm not moving. The judge alone can answer me. My God, y'all are quiet today. Mother, I got to pray to God to where I'm unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm going to stay here, Lord. And I'm going to seek you until the answer comes. That's his way. I pray. Day one, I don't hear nothing. Day seven, I don't hear nothing. Day 14, I don't hear nothing. Day 21, then the angel comes. The first time you open your mouth, God heard you. Glory to God. But there was some stuff going on in places you don't understand. But here is the answer. You got to trouble God. You got to weary God. You got to continually go before him day and night. I don't regard man. He said, yet because this widow troubleth me, what will I do? I will avenge her. I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, mm -hmm. she weary me. Because she won't stop. Come on. Mm. God want a belief system in the saints where I got to answer them. Because they won't stop. I got to loose Peter out of the prison. Because church in the church is making prayers to me without ceasing. So God made automatic doors. Brought Peter up. And the doors to the gate open up by their own self. Prayer has to be without ceasing. And it's in prayer you're going to speak God's words to him. God, you said you gave me power. You said, Lord, we have healing over all manner of disease. God, that's what you said. Reports still come back positive. God, you said, look, I'm bringing this report to you. Lord, you said all manner of disease, you were healed. Go back, reports still positive. Lord, what's going on? An unrighteous man who don't even care about people will answer that petition. And the next verse says, Lord to God, verse 6, look at what the unjust judge said. And shall not and God, shall not God avenge his again what? His. Are you his? Yeah. Mm, glory. Do you belong to him? Glory to God. Are you his? Glory to God. Y'all ain't talking. Are, are you his? If an unrighteous unbeliever who don't care about nobody would rise up and answer, how about much more you that are his? Shall not God. Shall not God. Avenge his own. Avenge his own. Elect. Which do what? Which cry day and night. Which cry night. every now and then. Day and night. A little bit here. A little bit here. I find most time when people say I keep praying, I keep praying, they ain't really praying the way the Bible gave them the prescription. They pray and then they faint. He's speaking this that men ought to always pray and not faint. The answer didn't come. You in the will of God, stay right there. The, the, you, you called on God the answer didn't come you in the will of God stay 
right there. He says, shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Yes. Though he bear long with them. Oh, uh, God, who, who he bearing long with this morning? So what you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna find another solution. Oh, you gonna stay there? Who gonna say? Somebody say I'm gonna stay here. Glory to God, Amen. And I'm gonna keep crying to Him day and night because if an unjust judge will answer, then surely God, who is my judge and my refuge and my habitation, He will answer. I tell you. And this is belief. Belief is when. I don't move even when I answer didn't come. I'm going to stay here. And I'll take up the words of Job. Though he slay me. Yet will I. Anybody got that declaration to make up? Lord, he bearing law with me. But I'm staying right here. I refuse to bow. I refuse to break. I ain't gonna have anxiety. I rebuke depression. Oh, glory to God. I'm staying here. This is the authority because God heard me and I already filed the court case. Um, uh, hallelujah. It's working through the circuit right now. I don't know what the holdup is in the judicial system, but one day, oh, God gonna come and He gonna answer me. Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect? Which cry. Which cry. Day and night mm, unto him. Day and night unto him. Though he bear long with them. And what did he say? I tell you. I tell you. That he will. He will. Avenge them speedily. My God, hallelujah. You stay there. I don't care how long it take. When the answer come, God moves speedily. God moves swift. But that process of time between the time when you prayed mm -hmm. and the time that he answered, all kind of frogs start coming out. Because you don't know what's going on. Amen. And it's easy to be moved. Yeah. But this woman wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. The more frogs came out, the more she rebuked them by troubling God. We got to be of the same mind. What does the end of the book say? Nevertheless. Nevertheless. When the son of man cometh. When the son of man cometh. Shall he find faith on the earth. Can you define faith for me in, in our Hebrews chapter 11? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Let's make sure we have the definition. The definition of faith. Mm -hmm. He says nevertheless. When the son of man comes. Will he find faith? So what's faith? Going before him mm -hmm. day and night, even though he bear law, even though he haven't answered, even though it haven't yet come to pass, my faith stays confident in the will of God. So what does the verse say? Hebrews 11 and 1. What says? Now, now faith, faith is the substance, the substance of, things of what I don't have yet. Mm -hmm. The evidence. It's the evidence of things not seen. I haven't seen it. But I believe. It haven't come to pass. But I wait on it. And I refuse to be shaken or unsettled in my spirit. While I'm waiting for God to bring this thing to pass. I got faith right now. And evidence of things that are not even seen. So we say often, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. This is why we tell you do stuff. You need to begin to act a 
and confess like you got it like it came to pass like the judge already done rule in my favor while he's bearing law because that strengthens your belief if you got it already mother you don't need faith but now faith is the substance of things hoped for listen what a man has he don't hope for it Hope that is seen is not hope. Yes, for what a man have already, why is he yet hoping for it? But if we hope for the things that we don't see, then patiently we we'll wait for it. Y'all see this? Everyone see this? So what are we going to do today? Take God's word in your mouth. I'm charging you all. Take God's word in your mouth. Amen. Glory to God. T turn off the movies and the, and the games and all those things. Amen. And let's put God's word in our mouth. I would love it to be that we just roll up at this walk of in 13 days and folks start bringing people with wheelchairs. People with devils tormented for years can come to that walk and the power of God in the church that believe him. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Mm. Folk rolling up there with AIDS getting healed. Folks rolling up with cancer getting healed. Stage four. People that that's 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 crippled. They, their arms get straight. My God. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all feel that? Yeah, y'all feel that? My my God, 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 God is not interested in your hot chew and your cold. Oh God. I'm talking about a God that has given the church authority over diverse kind of sicknesses that they can't find an antibiotic for, that there's no cure. I just want to make sure that we're in position. So at any time, the Spirit of God can work through us because we realize what's in our hands. And we realize the authority that we have. Take God's word in your mouth. Take his word in your mouth. And let his word be your guide. Amen. Let his word be your guide. When you're going to speak his word. Day and night. You get that language, it means in all parts in between. Speak his word. Declare his word. That God's word is the only thing that you can hear. Amen? God's word needs to be the only thing that you can hear. And you stay before him. God will reveal himself. Let me have one more passage and then let's get out of here. Let's get Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. Word of God says it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he had ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples and then verse 2 through 4 is Jesus teaching how you should address God. Amen. This is not a prayer to, rep to repeat. Amen. But it's giving you instruction on the content of your prayer. Amen. He said when you pray, say Father which art in heaven. So you need to address where God is. Amen. That's important not for God but for you. 
You need to recognize God is high, lifted up, sovereign, and Jay, he's almighty. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Not limited Come in on. power. Come on. At any time, if he needs more to get something done, because he, he's an unlimited supply, he can create additional power. Come on. Come on. He's a source of power. Mm. Unlimitless. Mm. Not bound. Y'all got this. When he comes, he's coming with such power and great glory that it's going to mess up the gravitational system yes. of the earth. Because Jesus, when he began to descend with that power and he's going to manifest and reveal more power, the Bible says islands are going to be moving. Glory to God. Mountains are going to be moving. What happened? God is going to disrupt the powers of the heaven and the earth. And the gravitation. You need to address he's in heaven. And that his power is unlimitless. Is that true? Mary is that true? Is his power limitless? So why do we fear sometimes? As though he can't or won't do it. Why do we fear like it can't be done when we serve a God of limitless power? Let that settle in your spirit. Address where he is. Mm -hmm. You are in heaven. Your name is holy. Hallowed be thy name. You want to reverence the name of Jesus Christ. Acknowledge that his kingdom, which is his authority, has come. His will be done in heaven and so also in the earth. Ask him to feed you mm -hmm. today. Yesterday is gone. Today I'm in need. And don't ever get relaxed or at ease as the brothers preach to where you're relying on what happened yesterday to carry you forward today. That was a formula for disaster. Be honest with God in verse 4. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Be honest and real with God if you stumble or if you error. And don't go before God and act like you're pure when your heart is crooked. And if you got people locked up in your heart that you have not forgiven, this is the time to address it in prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Don't try to forgive people outside of prayer. It must be done in prayer. Because in prayer, God can get in your heart and help you open the jail cell and release the captives and set the prisoners free. Amen. Be real if you got issue with someone in your heart when you go in prayer. And then God will remind you how much he forgave you of. And then it'll be a whole lot easier for you to forgive them. Glory to God. God will give you a quick news flash of your life and how you just stumbled yesterday and this morning you almost slipped and, and it'll be easy for you to forgive them. You got to forgive in prayer. Yes, sir. All right, pop quiz. Where are you going to forgive? In prayer. In prayer. Amen. I watch people when they got so much evil to say about other folk. And what other folk did to them. And they don't acknowledge how much they did to God. Gotta be careful. We ought to be some of the most forgiving people in the planet. I see sinners who have more forgiveness than people that's supposed to be speaking in tongues. Filled with the Holy Ghost. It means they're not praying. My God, this is good. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone. almost everyone, everyone that is indebted to us. God will reject your water baptism if you don't forgive. Amen? Y'all got that? And forgive. And when you get that thing right, amen, God will start showing you what you could have done better in the situation. Amen? 
destroys backbiting and envy and strife. And if somebody brings something to you, amen, that they got issue with somebody else and they didn't talk to them first, tell them don't come to me. Amen. 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 Don't bring me no issue you got with Theo and you ain't talked to Theo yet. If your brother trespass against you, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to get out of here. Your brother trespass against you, you go and take your fault to him and him alone. You don't need to go and ask everybody for a prophecy and a prayer of how you got to go to him. Shut up. You go talk to him. Him alone. If he don't hear you, then come talk to me. That's how you eliminate confusion. People ask me all the time, what you think about so and so? I don't think nothing. Pray for him. Amen? How you feel about this person and that person? I don't feel nothing. And if I did, it ain't my place to tell you because you're weak. You're going to go and carry it to somebody else. Pray! Because we could be so zoomed in on the flaws and the cracks of somebody else building. And you on a sinkhole. And that hole is the bottomless pit leading you straight to hell. Mind your own business and work out your own soul salvation. Are, are, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Right? Glory to God. I didn't intend to talk on this, but this is good medicine. Amen. This will lighten up the room. Amen, because some of y'all are right, y'all jail wards right now. Lord of God, God ain't call you to be no chaplain. Amen, get out the prison. Break down the jail. Let the prisoners go. All right, so he's like, teach us how to pray. And he addresses all these things that shall happen in your prayer. Make sure you have them as well, because they are fundamental to your belief and to your authority. None of these things should be missing. You should know where God is. You should know how holy his name is. You should understand that he is your sufficiency. He's the one that feeds you with bread. You should always be real with God. If you stumble or if you error, be real. Lord, I repent. Lord, and if anybody did anything wrong to me, Lord, I forgive them. Because when I think about it, Lord, I was worse. All this stuff got to be in order. Lord, let your spirit lead me today. Don't let me get in my flesh to where I'll be led in error. Amen. Amen. And you'll know it by the content of the speech. Amen. You'll know when you're in the flesh or when you're in the spirit. When you're in the flesh, you always find fault. When you're in the spirit, you're always uplifting, edifying, and building up. It's easy. Just do a check for yourself. Ain't nobody got to examine you. Examine your own self. Prove your own self. Amen. If you're always critical and judgmental about what other people ain't doing, you in your flesh. Come on. If you always pray about where people might be short, that's the spirit. Amen? Amen. Alright. After he addresses this, y'all got all that? Somebody say, I got it so I can move on. Alright, glory to God. If you don't got it, it's on you. He's asking them to teach them how to pray, right? He says, I want you to address these things when you pray. But then he does something in verse 5. Verse 5 starts with one little three-letter word. Mm -hmm. It says, and. Mm -hmm. So in addition to everything he laid out, there is some other stuff that is connected with it. So he says, and. He said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend. friend lend me three loaves of bread why he said a friend of mine is on a journey and he's come to me and I have nothing to set before him you know it's funny our reasoning always seems urgent this don't seem that urgent to me to make a midnight call it can wait till the morning. Come on, y'all be real. You calling me for bread at midnight? It can wait in the morning. In the morning, we'll go to the store. 
Amen? Amen. Is that right? Y'all quiet. Is that right? Yes, Eric, I'll blow you up at midnight. What you need? Oh, I just need three loaves of bread real quick. <laughs> Pastor Kim. I don't even got three loaves. Neighborhood Walmart closed at midnight. Let's wait in the morning. That reasonable? I'm going to teach you. That's how most people pray. They go. They ask God for something. God don't answer. All right. I'll wait till morning. Or I'll go and get it from somewhere else. But this friend is a little bit unique. He says, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine is in his journey has come to me in verse 6 and I have nothing to set before. And read verse 7 for me, Asar. It says, and he from within, from within shall answer and say, and say what? Trouble me not. Are you out your mind? The door is now shut. The door is shut. And my children, and my children are, with me, in are bed. with me in bed. This can wait. Come on. I cannot rise and give. I cannot rise and give you. And I say unto you. And I say unto you. Though he will not rise. Though he will not rise. And give him. And give him. Because he is his friend. Because he is his friend. Yet. Yet. Because of his importunity. Big word. Mm -hmm. That means. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied. Here, Steve. Praise the Lord, brother. Everything all right? Yeah, everything is all right. I just need three loaves. Three loaves. Brother, come back in the morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's, it's me, brother Kip. Brother Kip, what are you still doing out there? I, I, I got to get those three loaves. Please, Steve. I, I got to get those three loaves, brother Kip. Brother, I'm in bed at the pantry. It's locked. Go back. Steve, please. Brother Kip, I said no. Steve, you don't understand. Brother Kip, I said no. Steve! Uh, yeah. I ain't got nowhere else to go. Steve! 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 Some of y'all at midnight need to be Jesus! Jesus! Until the door get open! Sometimes God ain't going to do things because you don't want it bad enough. Come on. Importunity means destiny. I want this thing so bad that I will kick the door down tonight in order to get it. He will rise. He, he, he said, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. He said, I'm going to show you how to pray. You gotta have importunity. Mm -hmm. It's a nagging persistence. When you keep going before God until the door opens. Mm -hmm. Who's praying like that after this message? I wasn't gonna get that many hand claps, I understand. Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. Glory to God. So we got a relationship. But in certain circumstances, even the relationship ain't good enough. Come on. Yet. Because mm -hmm. of his opportunity. Yes. He will rise. Uh-huh. And give him as many. Oh, hallelujah. Not just three. Jesus. Mm. 
Come on. God will see your diligence. And he'll like, you know what? Not just three loaves. Here's the whole pantry. Come on. Take it all. Just leave me alone. As many as we need. Mm. And I say unto you. You prayed like that over your leg yet, Rick? Huh? But we're going to do it today, right? Because you got power. You, I, 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 I lay my hands on in the name of Jesus. I still got to live. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You know, I've been feeling a little bit better. In the name of Jesus. Look, we could say every other thing. We could tell jokes. We could laugh. What we can't say, I got power and authority over this. Kick the door down. What's the way the things you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive. And because I believe, I'm going to keep troubling God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 in the morning, Jesus, come Lord Jesus, Jesus, you're going to do it, Jesus, I trust you, Jesus, I don't see it yet, but for this cause, I faint not, I hold it on to you, mm. and I somebody say importunity, go with to God, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs, then there's another three letter word, and I say unto you. I say unto you. As. What? As. And what will happen? And it shall be given you. Then what does he say? Seek. Seek. And. and shall find. He's talking about prayer. What else? Knock. Somebody need to keep on knocking. But Rick, you need to keep on knocking. Till that leg get power back. Glory to God. Don't you know God can supersede physical therapy? Come on. Come on. Come on. Those weight machines got power, but a God says you're mine, and he got more power than the weight machine. But we got to speak that thing. Tell your neighbor, you got to speak that thing. I'm tired of walking around with this issue. God, you gave me power. To heal and all, I don't care where that power track it could come from the laying on of hands of the ministry of the prayer, it could come through fasting. I don't care, but Lord, I'm gonna trouble you until the door get open. Lord Jesus, open the door. Lord Jesus, open the door. Lord Jesus, open the door. Here's me next week. Lord Jesus, open the door. Lord Jesus, open the door. Here's me next month. Lord Jesus, open the door. Open the door. You still praying over that? Yeah, because I believe him. You go pray. Let me work out my salvation. Lord, I believe you. Importunity. It got to be a foundation of your faith and of your prayer to God. Harris, you got authority over. Work it out in prayer. Verse 9 says, And I say unto you, Ask, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Then I love verse 10, because he says, For everyone. For what? Everyone. For what? Everyone. No, not everyone. Everyone. Only certain people get answers from God. Everyone. God, oh God only do some for certain people. Moment, but what did the word say? That's the word got to be in your mouth. The word says for everyone that oh, asks uh, receives. Are you included in everyone? Stand up if you are part of everyone. Where do you stand? He says for. Everyone, come on, y'all read with me first 10. For everyone that ask if, ask is a one time thing. Ask if. Lord, where you at? Lord, Steve, you got to open the door. Lord, I, I, Lord, I need bread. Lord, Lord, what happened? Asking is continual process. Relentless. For everyone that ask if receive that glory to God amen I 
keep on asking him and he keep on pouring it out upon me. The more you ask, the more you will receive. Who, who, who need just like the Red Sea to open? Everybody don't need it, but glory to God. My God, hallelujah. Who, who need it? Open to God, hallelujah. Amen. Ask him for it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ask him, Lord, open it for me. Glory to God. Everyone that asks it now, receive. Will you receive if you ask? Ask him for it. Everyone that asks him, receive it. Now, he had to purify us. Mm -hmm. You make sure that you asking in your spirit, right? Yeah. Amen. You ain't conniving and contriving and twisted. Right. And you asking and be like, Pastor Kim, it ain't happened yet. No, it don't work like that. Right. You got to go through verses 2 through 4 because they purify. You ain't got nobody in debt. Amen. You ain't holding no grudges. Right. Your walk ain't crooked. Assuming yeah. you got all of that in order, my God. Whatever you ask him for, he's going to give it to you. You will receive it. You will receive it. You will receive it. For verse 10 says, for everyone that asketh and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh. Rip by your belief, but you're gonna walk in this tabernacle, and your leg gonna be restored with the power of the other one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ask for it, and don't ask your way. God wanna make a miracle out of you, soldier. But you hear, do y'all feel sometimes when we say this kind of stuff, do you feel the unbelief? Come on. It don't have to be from him, but you feel it in the room? Yeah. Like, oh my God, like God, God, God won't do that. God can't do, you, you, do you feel it? Yeah. Meditate on the word. Glory to God. And confess what you have you have authority. Yes, Brian. And tell unbelief. Get out of here. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Glory to God. For he is faithful. He is faithful. That promise. That promise. Have importunity. Hold on to your authority. And God is going to work mighty in your lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you all this morning. I appreciate you tiring along with us. All right, we got it. All right, lift their hands to the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. I have authority. Glory to God. Come on, say it with some conviction. What do you have? I have authority over what? Unclean spirits. All manner of what? All manner of disease. Again, I have authority over unclean spirits. All manner of sickness. Oh man of disease. Bible said again in another place, your tread on serpents and scorpions. Glory to God. And I just want you to walk in that victory. Amen. In your life, God wants to manifest power. And if it haven't happened yet, you need to start asking him. As a church, we want to ask him. Because everyone that asks him, receives.
You want that seek? Fine. And to him that knocketh, the door shall be open. All right. God bless you all, say. Grace and peace be multiplied. We love you all in Jesus' name. Amen.